pull out your mobile phone for a second. Yeah, mobile phone there. Just grab it out. Just put it on the desk, and I just want you to look at it for a minute. Okay. Now, human beings are very inventive creatures. Okay. Um, many creatures invent things, but we're we're like invention is our thing, right? So we invent objects with the intent to generally solve a problem. What problem does this is this designed to solve? Uh, people have said convenience. Convenience in what way? Like what kind of convenience does this solve? <laughs> Emojis. We invented this room. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Um, we invented phones. Uh, because we wanted to talk to people. And we wanted to talk to people from a distance, right? Then we invented smartphones because we were like, well, we want to be able to access the internet as well. If this can get into a network, then, then great. Now here's the thing. Emojis was a, was a joke, but actually it's not really. We invent a thing with a purpose, but when, then we discover actually this thing is far more powerful than we originally intended. And it can do lots of things that we didn't originally expect, like trivially, emojis, or more seriously, things like, does anyone know what the Arab Spring is? Has anyone heard of that before? The Arab, the, oh, there's an S there, I'll use that. The Arab Spring. This was, um, this is about, oh, how many years ago was it now? Maybe six to seven years ago, I think, where um, many Arab nations sort of went into chaos because suddenly there were all these popular uprisings. Right? Um, people were wanting to try to overthrow dictatorships and all that kind of thing. And they came in a real way from these. Because suddenly people could communicate to each other in a secure way that the government could not control. Right? So we invent things and we have an intent for them. Like find an area, right? a simple problem. And then we discover they can do things, these, these inventions we have, they can do things that we didn't necessarily expect. So underneath this, I want to make a little subheading, which is, an unexpected side effect. Okay, now what I'm going to get us to think about is... Oh, what's happened to my iPad? There we go. Uh, this function here. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to think about this, this problem using integration and just see what happens out of just an invented problem. Okay? So for instance, if this is f of x, 2x minus 4, then what happens if we consider, I've got some numbers here, yeah, from 0 to 4, what will happen? Okay. We can treat this as an area or we can treat it as a primitive. For now, just trust me for a minute, I'm going to treat it as a primitive just to help us get a bit of practice with this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, if I'm treating it oops, as a primitive, I'm going from 0 to 4 of 2x minus 4 dx, right? So now, I can work out the primitive of this quite easily, can't I? So I'll put my big square bracket to indicate I'm about to write the primitive in here. What's the primitive of 2x? x squared, very good. The primitive of minus 4 is minus 4x. Fantastic, primitive is over. And then I say I'm going to evaluate from 0 to 4. Okay. Now, on the next line, what I'm going to do is, this is my, I'm just, just someone realized something? I'm going to write just over here what the next line will look like. It's f of b take away f of a. Right? And it's really important to me that what we do is we actually write this step as a straight substitution. You can probably work out the numbers quite easily, but I'm deliberately not doing it until the next line so I can see the thought process. Or rather, so I can show you the thought process so you can show the marker, you get the idea. So, let's do f of b. That's 16, that's 4 squared, isn't it? Take away 16, that's, that's f of b. Happy? Where, where b happens to be 4, okay? Then I'm going to take away f of a, which is 0, take away 0? Hmm. Before I just write down the next line, which is pretty trivial, I want to point out, 
because I know a couple of you have already worked this out, but we didn't discuss it all together. Why did I write the primitive without a plus C? Because that's what we, call, we sort of made a big deal about that, like make sure you don't forget the constant, okay? Why did I not include it? And the reason why is, suppose I did, right? Watch what happens when I do this line. Watch what happens. If the plus C is in the primitive, then it should be in here and in here. Do you agree? But then look what happens as soon as I actually do this. Whatever the plus C was, it just gets subtracted from itself. So it doesn't matter. It might as well have never been there. Does that make sense? So therefore, that's why I don't need to write it. Okay. So tell me what the answer is. Now, I don't know about you, but most areas that I calculate are not zero. <laughs> In fact, the areas I calculate are never zero. So what's going on? Well, we need a bit of a picture. So I'm going to ask you to help me draw this from here to here. What does it look like? Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure this is what it looks like. Okay, 2x minus 4, I can see there's a, um, a y-intercept down here. When I go across two units, I've gone up 4, so that coordinate there is 2. And then once I go, go across another 4 units, I come all the way up to, that should be positive 4. Okay, now if I go back to my definition that I've helpfully written here, right, I'll change them all back to x's because I'm thinking about x's right now. Uh, f of x dx is supposed to be the area bounded by the curve, the x-axis, look at where the x-axis is, x equals a, which in this case is x equals 0, this guy here, and x equals 4, which is this dotted line just on the edge. Okay? Now, 0, this is the area that is defined by this integral. So how on earth did it come up with zero? Because it doesn't look like zero to me. Eric. Because it's a positive area and a negative So what was the problem we designed this tool to solve again? What were we trying to solve? We were trying to find like an area, right? One of the things we know about areas is that they're positive. It's a measured thing, okay? But all of a sudden, we have created a tool that has more powers than we intended it for to have. Because this tool, this tool, can distinguish between areas that are negative and areas that are positive. Now, because you, you can see this, and this is why this is very deliberately designed, okay? These two areas here are exactly equal, right? So they exactly cancel each other out. So therefore, that's why, well, the positive and the negatives eliminate each other. So you end up with zero, okay? Now, that's a bit weird. That's a little bit weird, okay? Um, let me point out, if you were asked the question, tell me what's that green area, if you said zero, you would be wrong <laughs> because that's clearly not a zero area. There's, there's two triangles, I don't know, put them together and you, uh, two, but, uh, that'll be eight square units, okay? So if I asked you just what's that area, it's eight square units. But if I asked you what this integral is, you would have to say it's zero, okay? Now, this is a bit weird. This is where it gets a bit murky. Because I said these integrals are areas. Well, they're a little bit different because now in this world of Cartesian coordinates and that kind of thing, I can have negative areas. That doesn't make sense in our previous schemes. You can't have a negative area or, or a negative length. But you can here, okay? Now let me try and make sense of why this has to be. It's not just some weird oddity, okay? Um, what was the metaphor we started with today? We started with, um, the rocket traveling, right? It traveled 60 kilometers per hour, then it traveled 100 kilometers per hour, etc. Look at this graph. If this is the graph of velocity compared to time for our astronaut, what is the astronaut doing now? They're not going 60 kilometers per hour and then changing to 100. They're doing something very, very different. Okay? Let me ask you this for example. This point right here at x equals 2. Tell me what the astronaut is doing. This is a graph of f dash, right? This is a graph of their velocity. What is the astronaut doing right there? Michael? The astronaut is turning around. Because look, right? They're exactly 0 there. The velocity is 0, so they're staying still for a split second. But before that, see down here, the velocity is a negative number. So they're traveling backwards. 
and then over here they're traveling forwards. So in between there, they had to turn, right? That's a turning point. Okay. Now to help you visualize what's going on, we know what the primitive is, don't we? Let's just let's just graph the primitive. That's actually what we started this morning with the astronaut, right? Help me. This is what it's going to look like. X squared minus four x, right? What's it look like? What kind of shape is it? It's a parabola, right? What can you tell me about this parabola? It's, uh, it's x-intercepts are 0 and 4, so 0 and 4, 0 and 4, 4. That's not a coincidence, is it? Is it concave up or down? Up. So this is my displacement graph. This is the position. Can you tell me why the answer has to be 0? What, what was the original, the very first question I asked you? How far have they traveled, right? How far have they traveled? Well, how far are they? They started here, right? At the starting point. Then they went down, then they came back up. Well, by time four, where are they? And the answer is, they are back where they started. Does that make sense? And geometrically, this is the reason why. See, that plus C doesn't matter. Suppose it was plus six. I don't know. What would the graph look like? It would look something like this. Right? It's moved up. But look. You start at 6, well, you end at 6 as well. Your still total displacement is still 0. Does that make sense? So, sorry, scale's a bit off. This is a really important idea, and it's kind of confusing, to be frank, okay, especially at this beginning point. Integrals introduce us to this idea that areas can be negative based on the fact that their position tells us something. If they're below the axis, right, if I ask you to do the integral from 0 to 2, let's, let's just quickly do it. Uh, here, if I went from 0 to 2 of this guy, right, watch what happens. From x squared minus 4x from 0 to 2, tell me what happens to the upper boundary. This 2, when I put it in, it's going to be 4 minus 8. Do you agree? When I put it in, take away 0. Is that okay? Negative 4. Of course it's negative 4 because it's just this triangle, right? The entirety of its area is below the x-axis, so it's negative. 